Listen up, beautiful people. I want to take just a minute to tell you about our new hosting site, Anchor. Anchor is your one-stop shop for recording, hosting, and distributing your podcast. Best of all, it's 100% free and ridiculously easy to use. And now, Anchor can match you with great sponsors who want to advertise on your podcast. So go to anchor.fm slash start and become part of the Anchor community today. And now, back to the show. Okay, you beautiful, beautiful people. It's great to be with you. I'm Scotty Smith. Just doing a little introduction here for a podcast that uh, is a happy one for 901 FC. You may hear the sound of the ocean waves in the background, perhaps a seagull or two. I'm on vacation this week, but Lawrence Dockery did a remarkable job of covering Memphis 901 FC's dominant win over Hartford Athletic. Arch Dockery doing a great job as he has done all summer. Caleb Hilliard writing our previews for us. Really appreciate the, those two guys covering for me in this very busy summer. So uh, the first pod, we'll divide this into two. The first pod will deal with um, the, the 901 FC victory over Hartford Athletic. The second pod that Lawrence recorded will deal with the United States and their inability to win the Gold Cup. Lawrence had some thoughts on that. He thought it was a winnable game that was there for the taking, and Mexico came away with the Gold Cup victory. So Lawrence has some thoughts on that, and that'll be in the second pod. We're also moving all of our pods that have been exclusively on Anchor over to Apple Podcast, uh, Stitcher, and other places where you get your pods. So sit back, relax, and enjoy the 901 Soccer Podcast. All right, folks, welcome into another brand new edition of the 901 Soccer Podcast. I'll be your host, Lawrence Docker. You can find me on Twitter at LDoc93. You can find the 901 Soccer Podcast on Twitter at 901 Soccer Pod. You can find us on Facebook as well. Just go to Facebook and search 901 Soccer, and we should pop right up. Got a lot to get to uh, on this edition of the podcast. We're going to be talking uh, Memphis 901 FC's dominant win over Hartford Athletic. That's the uh, third time this year that Memphis has beaten Hartford, so I think it's safe to say that uh, Memphis has their number. We'll break down all of the interesting ins and outs of that game, maybe take a look ahead to the next game, and maybe, just maybe, we might talk a little bit uh, U.S. men's and women's national team, uh, but we'll only touch on that if there's time. So, jump right into it here. Uh, Memphis 901 FC on Saturday night down at AutoZone Park, taking on Hartford Athletic, and there was... A sense before the one of the topics of discussion prior to the game was that we'd obviously already played Hartford twice this year and beaten them both times, beaten them on the road in Hartford early on in the season for the first win in league play, I believe it was, and then out at Mike Rose at home during the U.S. Open Cup. Uh, the first win was. I want to say it was 2-1 to one or 3-2. to two. It was a one-goal game on the road in Hartford that uh, the boys in blue were able to pull out. And then at home in the Open Cup, it was just an absolute shellacking. And it wasn't close from the get-go, I believe. Mark, that was a game where Mark Birch had a penalty inside the first five minutes. And that's pretty much how the game played out Saturday night. Uh, no penalties, but right from the get-go, it was, it was all... Me- well, let me, let, me, let me back that up. Not right from the get-go. It was about three minutes into the game, Hartford had their best chance of the game as they, uh, Jorgensen, I believe it was, took a shot from probably 30 to 35 yards out that was kind of moving and swerving, and it hit Zach Levine right in the chest, uh, not Zach Levine, Scott Levine, excuse me, uh, right in the chest, and it was something, he didn't really do well with that I don't think it hit his chest and he gave up a big juicy rebound that one of Hartford's players came in and honestly should have scored and I think that's one of those ones where if you're just some random dude sitting up there in the stands watching the game going oh I could have scored that 
this is one of those rare times where I think you probably could have scored that. Because uh, there was... Uh, there wasn't a defender around. It was a big, juicy rebound, and Hartford's attacker rifled it off the corner of the where the where the crossbar and the post meet is where he where he shot. If this was some sort of contest and there was a bull bullseye right there where he won a thousand raffle tickets, he would have won a thousand raffle tickets. But that's not what this was. The the goal put the ball in the net, and he didn't do that. So Memphis dodged a huge bullet there and almost immediately made them pay. Because uh, Elliot Collier came right back down, uh, a fantastic solo run, made it one nothing. Uh, picked it up outside of the box and dribbled all the way in, and that was. Um, I'm trying to. Remember, I can't remember. Did if Elliot? Let me look this up because it's going to bug me. I wonder if Elliot Collier was one who got a goal against Hartford in the Open Cup. I know he got the goal against Orlando in the Open Cup. Uh, give me one second. Let me see what I can find here because. Uh, even if he didn't, uh, Elliot Collier is uh, playing like a man possessed on fire right now. He is just rocking and rolling. No, he did not. The, uh, the, the four guys that scored against Hartford in the Open Cup, you had Birch, Graf, and Hackworth, and Graf got a pair in that game. But uh, Elliot Collier got the first goal, and then not five minutes later, almost a carbon copy of the first goal, he gets another one. Solo run from outside the box, though. Uh, I believe it was Du, Due, however you want to pronounce that name. Uh, Hartford's initial goalkeepers, they had to make a goalkeeping change in the first half due to injury. He'll want that one back. Great run by Collier, and all credit to him. Uh, uh, one of the big issues that Memphis fans had with him early on in the season is the fact that he would get into the box and wouldn't shoot the ball. Dude came out firing against Hartford. His first two shots resulted in two goals, so kudos to him because, you know, there's that old saying, uh, I believe, it, you know, it's in soccer. I know for a fact it's a hockey saying, uh, you can't score if you don't shoot, and, you know, good things happen when you throw the throw the ball or throw the puck at the net, and that's what Memphis did. Elliot Collier got out there, he's like, I'm going to shoot the ball. He shot it, and he scored three times. But the uh, second goal was... E that's it through the five hole off the keeper's leg and into the goal. That was not good goalkeeping, but they all count the same. Memphis goes up two to nothing, and we hadn't even played 15 minutes yet. And you're thinking, wow, where like where has this been all year? Uh, but as uh, I think and Collier in the post game press conference said as much that the team kind of after going up two nothing, they kind of took their foot off the gas just a little bit, and that allowed. Hartford to kind of get back into the game, and which they did. Uh, Jorgensen, I think it was, uh, had a you know had that long range blast to start the game that almost got put in, and he had another long range blast, and this one went off of one post, off the other post, and in past Levine in the goal to cut the deficit two to two to one, and that's where it stood at halftime. And the first ten or fifteen minutes of the second half, it was all Hartford. Hartford came out with a purpose and with intent, and they had chance after chance after chance after chance. There was one sequence where Memphis turned the ball over about 75 yards from their own goal, and Hartford came, and in the blink of an eye, they were all the way down, and Mark Birch, I think, I know he got a yellow card, and I think he was lucky not to see red uh, for a challenge at midfield. The referee played advantage wisely, uh, allowed Hartford to continue their attack, and that was the sequence where Levine and one of the defenders, I think maybe it was Grandison, I'm not sure, ran into each other and knocked each other down kind of at the right there by the corner of the eight, you know, where the 18 corners off. And whoever the attacker was for Hartford, I think might have been in shock that he's in the six yard box and there's nobody around him, and he sent that ball into orbit. Just kind of popped, just got his club, got his pitching wedge out and just sent it up. And I think that ball might still be traveling. Uh, because there, there's, that's another, that's another one, man. There are a lot of, a lot of these in this game where if you're sitting there watching in the stands going, oh, I could have scored that. Yeah, I think any, anybody probably could have scored that. So Memphis dodged another bullet. And then Elliot Collier, which Coach McQueen after the game said it, Collier's third goal is probably the best one you're going to see all year from anybody in the USL. Uh, he picked the ball up at midfield and just went past everybody. 
And uh, they just Hartford decided for whatever reason in this game that they were just going to let Elliot Collier just run, have free runs at goal. Just let him pick it up and go, and they'll just say, "All right, just keep doing." Yeah, this just kind of there's like a di a guy just kind of jogging us. It's like it almost reminded me of uh, not quite because this the level is different, but Diego Maradona's wonder goal against England at the 1986 World Cup. That's kind of what this reminded me of. It's just uh, in Maradona's run, not the one where he punched it in. That's the hand of God, and we and you know that's that's different. But the one where he picked it up in his own half and just kind of ran by everybody and scored and. If you watch that, there's just kind of there's an England defender who just kind of runs alongside him for the entire time of the run, just going, yeah, you know, this is this is a good run. I like this is a good run. That's what Hartford did with Elliot Collier on Saturday night. Is every time he got the ball, they just said, well, let's 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 see how far he can go. And Collier, he looked like Messi out there. He was just he was just running past people, and he dropped a hat trick. And of course, I felt kind of bad for him because right after he scored that third goal, he went and rolled by the corner flag to celebrate and his leg cramped up on him and he had to get subbed out right after that. Uh, but you know what? You've dropped a hat trick and there's 20 minutes to play. I think you've earned earned that sub. But things got better from there. You think, wow, so it's the first hat trick in Memphis 901 FC history. You're up 3-1 to one against a team that you've already proven you've, you can beat. You've probably got this game in the bag. It got better. Lagos Kunga checked in as a sub. Uh, Joe and Graf laid off a fantastic ball. He didn't, it wasn't even it was a one timer. He didn't even take one touch. He just Graf laid it off on Kunga, probably about three steps inside the 18, and just rifled it. It was an absolute tracer bullet. It was amazing. Uh, I think if the, the like that's one of those ones where you're like, man, I hope they got that net tied on securely because that one was a fireball, and that made it four to one, and that was it. And um, one thing I do want to touch on uh, that Coach McQueen uh, discussed after the game is Ewan Grandison's performance tonight. He obviously is not a starting right back, and that's where he started due to, I believe it was a suspension for West Sharpie, and Coach McQueen said he did admirably in that job against Hartford, and but that's not something we're going to see a lot of because he, uh, Coach rates uh, West Sharpie as one of the best right backs in the league and uh, so it's just Grandison gets rolled in there, and then he called him a warrior because there was a, na towards the last, I'd say, the last 10 minutes of the game, he had a nasty collision right at about midfield and knocked heads with one of Hartford's players, and he, he got cut up pretty good because everybody for both teams immediately, both players are down, and both sets of players are looking to the benches and waving the trainers on, like, come on, come on, because y'all got to get out here right now. And I'm like, well, that can't be good. And there was just kind of this gasp in the press box when, because the camera was right there on him. You couldn't really tell just looking at the player. You had to look up at the Jumbotron, and the camera was on him. He picked his head up from the ground. Man, that blood was pouring out of his head like water. It was, woo, it was, it, I'm still, still getting chills about that. And so he went off. Uh, Memphis was already out of subs by that point. Otherwise, his night would have been done. And... This is where Coach McQueen called him a warrior because he went out and got his head bandaged up and came right back in. So that is some guts. That is uh, the, the grit and grind era may be dead for the Memphis Grizzlies, but that was some grit and some grind from Ewan Grandison right there uh, to get your head all cut up and then come back in and close out the game when the game was pretty much already decided. There's less than 10 minutes to play and you're up three goals against one of the worst teams in the USL. I don't know that uh, even a man down that you're going you're gonna to have to sweat that one too much. But shout out to Ewan Grandison for coming in and, and, and getting that done. There was also a, a bizarre play in the first half where Hartford had a corner, and the corner came in and Levine punched the ball away, and he just got absolutely whacked. Just crushed. And the referee was right there, called the foul, uh, and then there was a little bit of a dust-up, and so the referee let the players sort that out, and then he did caution... Uh, it was Sem DeWitt who, as a matter of fact, in the Open Cup game out of Mike Rose, picked up two yellow cards and was sent off. Uh, so I don't think Memphis will be sad to not have to see his face anymore this year because the dude just gets under your skin and is annoying and is a pest. Uh, announced attendance for the game on Saturday against Hartford was 67-27. That's right in line with what the attendance has been this year. Through nine home games at AutoZone Park, and that's 
one friendly against Pachuca, one Open Cup game against the New York Red Bulls U23 team, and then the remainder are USL regular season games, 67-27. Total attendance at home for the year is 60,451. Through those nine games, that averages out to 6,717. And then, of course, you've got the two games in the Open Cup out at Mike Rose. You had 1,819 against Hartford the first time, and then the overcapacity crowd against Orlando of 3,088. But for games at AutoZone Park, averaging through nine games, 6,717 people per game. That's not too shabby uh, for first year. And prior to the game, uh, some of us were hanging out at Brass Door, and uh, Peter Freund and uh, uh, Craig Unger were in there, and there was discussion. Uh, the excitement level for year two, in terms of stuff they've allegedly got going on, nobody was willing to go into specifics, but... Uh, the, 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 like their faces lit up talking about it. They're like, oh, we got we got some, we got a lot of cool stuff ready to go for next year. We're so excited for next year. Um, so we're not even we're, we're about halfway through this season. I'm already excited for next year. I hate to sound like a Tennessee football fan. You know, Tennessee's going to be really good next year, but it's it's going to be next year's going to be exciting, uh, according to those who are in the know. So that's all we that's that's we that's what we hope for. All right, I think that's going to wrap it up here for us on this latest edition of the 901 Soccer Podcast. Um, do want to remind everybody we've got uh, three more home games down at AutoZone Park this month. Uh, on the 13th, unfortunately, I mean, not unfortunately, but uh, 13th, Memphis goes on the road to Charleston, a uh, team that beat Memphis already this year. At home, I believe, one to nothing. Ah, oh, yes, that was the 93rd minute goal that they scored. Uh, so on the road at Charleston on Saturday the 13th, and then a three-game home stand following that against uh, Nashville SC on Wednesday the 17th, and then at home on Saturday the 20th against New York Red Bulls two, and then at home Saturday the 27th against Ottawa Fury. So that good opportunity for Memphis to get a solid run of form there going at home. Nashville, that's, uh, I don't want to call that a rivalry game because, um, you know, we've only played them the one time. Obviously, there's some disdain between the fans of the clubs and the residents of the two cities. Um, as somebody who was not initially born in the Memphis area, I don't necessarily get it, but... It'll be uh, that'll be that'll be a fun one. Folks will be hyped up, fired up for that. All right, so now that'll do it for us here this evening on the 901 Soccer Podcast. I want to say thanks to everybody for listening to me ramble about the Memphis 4-1 win over Hartford. Uh, just want to say I'm Lawrence Docker. You can find me on Twitter at ldoc93. You can find the 901 Soccer Podcast on Twitter at 901 Soccer Pod. You can find us on Facebook as well at 901 Soccer. Thanks for listening, and we will talk to you next time.